Hey everyone, Tin Man here, and the Joel Tide update has brought us a ton of new items that are sure to shake up the meta of Dota Underlords. This guide will help you to evaluate each one of them and to know how and when to use them. First off, let's start with the tier 1 options. First off, we got Headdress, and this is a health regeneration item that provides an aura around the wearer, which heals up all allied units, including the wearer, by 20 health per second. It's nothing too fancy, but it's a solid item in the early and mid game. It pairs best with defensive alliances like warriors or knights who take more advantage of the healing and it's best used on the tanky units who are going to be in the front lines and taking damage and are likely to stick around for a while such as Pudge, Abaddon, Axe, or Treant Protector. Next up, Kaya. Kaya is an interesting one that increases the damage of your unit's spells. This is the first such ability that we've seen in Dota Underlords. It could prove to be quite a strong tier 1 item, even into the later stages of the game, when placed on a unit who deals lots of spell damage. Mages, of course, are an obvious choice, like Razor or Keeper of the Light, but it also works well on Beastmaster or Bristleback, whose main damage sources are their spells. Morbid Mask is a simple lifesteal item, and it'll be good on any unit who deals lots of damage. It's ideal on a melee unit like Slark or perhaps Legion Commander, Slarder or Lycan, who are going to be in danger more often than not compared to the ranged damage dealers. It's not really a great item on tanks like Pudge or Axe, since even though they do want the healing from the lifesteal, their damage output means that the lifesteal would not amount to too much. Talisman of Evasion is a defensive item that is very similar to an existing item, Chainmail, and honestly it's just a little bit worse right now. Both of them will reduce damage from auto attacks, but Chainmail's 7 armor grants a bit more effective HP than 20% evasion. Not only that, Chainmail will reduce damage from physical spells, whereas Talisman does not. It only really affects auto attacks. The one saving grace for Talisman of Evasion though is that it can deny opponents mana when the attacks are evaded. So you're going to want to put this on tanky frontliners like Pudge, Abaddon, Axe, and Treant, or anybody else that you'd normally put Chainmail on. Voidstone. Now Voidstone will fulfill a very similar role to the removed Brooch of the Aggressor, which uses the exact same artwork, so in, in one sense you could say it's the exact same item. Uh, units holding this item will be able to cast their abilities a lot faster and more consistently, as the mana gain from Voidstone is even larger than the old Brooch of the Aggressor in most cases. It's best used on units with low cooldowns so that the mana gain is not wasted waiting for a cooldown to come back up. Ideal units include Necrophos, Storm Spirit, and Tinker. Crystallis. Crystallis is a downgraded version of the Daedalus item which was removed in the patch. It has a similar effect, giving bonus attack and a crit chance, but both are weaker considering Crystallis is a tier 2 item versus Daedalus's tier 4. It goes best on units with high attack speed, or other ways to scale up the attack damage, such as Ember Spirit's Sleight of Fist, Legion Commander's Champion ability, or just fast attack speeds like Drow and Cleave from Sven. Desolator. This Desolator is the upgraded version of Blightstone, which was also removed, and it shreds 5 armor from the opponent as opposed to just 3. This is quite a potent ability and can be used to focus fire down key targets. This debuff will last for 5 seconds, so it's great on any unit who can spread the debuff around to multiple targets, as you can likely get back to that target within the next 5 seconds to reapply the debuff. Something like Medusa's Split Shot or Ember Spirit's Sleight of Fist are really great with this. Uh, it also goes well with Brutes or Dead Eyes, uh, as the Brutes will naturally switch targets and Dead Eyes will be swapping to the lowest health target, or even somebody like Weaver who will Shikuchi away and then often retarget to somebody new every couple of seconds. Hand of Midas is a powerful upgrade on the remove Poaching Knife. Rather than giving crit chance against low HP targets, it will give a strong amount of attack speed. This item is great for that attack speed alone, let alone the gold income which is just icing on the cake. You want to put it on hard hitting units like Sniper or Demons who are going to have high attack damage and are much more likely to get killing blows. So Shadow Demon, Chaos Knight, or Terror Blade in addition to something like Sniper, whose Assassinate will very often kill the target and get you a gold. Orb of Venom applies a damage over time effect to the target, dealing a total of 90 bonus damage over its duration. If the unit attacks the same target multiple times though, some of that duration is going to be overwritten within the 3 second window, meaning that it's going to lose some of its efficiency. So it's very similar to Desolator in that regard, in that it's best when the debuff is spread to multiple targets. So you want to put it on the same type of units that'll swap targets often, so Medusa, Weaver, Gyrocopter, uh, Brutes, or Ember Spirit as well. 
Uh, Stonehall Pike. The Brawny Alliance has come for our items. This is a the first kind of item that we've seen in Dota Underlords that will be scaling off the kills that your unit has. And so just like Brawnies, uh, this will be very good to scale into the mid and late game if you can get it going early. This item obviously goes best on units who will rack up a lot of kills and who have high attack speed, so like Hunters or perhaps Juggernaut. One not so obvious consideration for this is that it's better on lower cost units. While late game units like say Gyrocopter who has a high attack speed may want this bonus damage, the early units will generally just have more time to rack up kills and get more benefit out of this by the late game as opposed to somebody who you just bought at the end of the game. Uh, Stonehall Cloak, most of the comments that we just talked about Stonehall Pike apply to Stonehall Cloak. They go on really similar units who are likely to get a lot of kills and luckily most of these units are often going to be in melee range at some point and thus will be exposed to more damage and that's where Stonehall Cloak comes in to help keep them alive. Uh, this means that the bonus health will really benefit them in surviving the long fights to dish out that consistent damage. As a note, uh, in the current state of balance, it seems like Stonehall Pike and Stonehall Cloak are exceptionally powerful at, at the exact values that they released with. Uh, maybe in just a couple of games that I've played, they both seem really, really powerful. I don't know if they're going to be adjusted at any point, but to me, they seem really strong and I would put a very high priority on them. If you can get any kind of unit that is going to rack up a lot of kills, they're very, very strong at all points in the game. Moving on to the tier 3 items, we've got Yule's Scepter. It's kind of an odd item, it's a little bit like Force Staff, which will take a unit out of the fight for a few seconds, but it will trigger on any attack, not just a melee attack like Force Staff. It does leave the target in place, which means right after they come back down, they can just continue on attacking rather than have to walk back or possibly retarget. It also makes it a little bit less good to protect carries like Dragon Knight or Sniper for this reason, as the attacker is still going to be there when they come back down. But the mana gain on it does make it ideal for a different sort of unit who has short cooldowns but also could use some protection like Necrophos or Witch Doctor or even people like Omni Knight or Timbersaw who are going to be in the front lines but also have a short cooldown and are going to be attacked very often and can kind of use both halves of this item really efficiently. Next up, Silver Edge. It provides a solid amount of attack speed and bonus health, making it great on high damage dealers who are going to get into melee range for that extra survivability plus the attack speed. The break effect is nice, but it is, but since it's on a cooldown, there's not really any benefit to spreading it around like Orb of Venom or Desolator since you're only going to be able to have one target broken at a time. If you can scout out opponent's positioning, you want to place this where the wearer is going to hit a high value break target, especially one with one of the new ore items like Vladimir's Offering, which is a new item that is very powerful and provides a large aura to your team within two cells, which is a lot of the board. Most of your allies will gain plus 10% damage, plus 5 armor, and 10% lifesteal if the holder of Vladimir's Offering is within range. Whoever's holding this item has to be kept alive though since it is a quite uh, a strong buff, so you want to put it on one of your tankiest units, uh, perhaps or perhaps one that has high health but is just going to be behind the front line, somebody like Lone Druid who's unlikely to die very quickly in the fights but still kind of stays near the middle. Onto the tier 4 items, we've got Aeon Disc, and this is another odd effect. It provides a decent amount of health and 2 seconds of immunity when the unit cannot attack or be attacked when it drops uh, below 50% HP. The affected unit can still cast spells though, so it's great on spellcasters like Keeper of Light, who can be placed up front to gain the mana from opposing attacks, and then use the immunity to finish the cast. When it triggers, all opposing units will retarget to another unit, meaning that it can be used to drop aggro and to get units like Assassins off your damage dealer. So ideally it goes on somebody like Keeper of Light or like Sniper and Gyrocopter who have high value cast abilities that they may be able to do during that two second window. Butterfly, another tier 4 item, is kind of a jack of all trades item. It gives a decent amount of attack damage, attack speed, and survivability from evasion. Like Silver Edge and Morbid Mask before, this combination makes it ideal for high damage dealers who are going to get into melee range so that the evasion is worthwhile. It deals less overall than a dedicated offensive item like Moonshard though, but it's still very valuable on the right units like Legion Fander, Life Stealer, or even Dragon Knight and Sven who deal lots of damage but often get at risk in risky situations. Diffusal Blade. With Anti-Mage removed from the game, Diffusal Blade will fulfill a similar role, uh, but this one can now be equipped to any unit. 
the this un, this item will burn 20 mana per hit with no limit or cooldown so it's going to be best on units with relatively high attack speeds it's also better on units who tend to stay on the same target rather than constantly switching like brutes because if you try to burn too many different units manas you might not be successful in stopping any of them from casting and you're really just delaying the inevitable so the best heroes here are something like Medusa, who can burn from multiple targets, Ember Spirit, who stays on one target but also hits everybody with his Sleight of Fist, and Juggernaut and Gyrocopter have pretty fast attack speeds to really lock down one target with this item. On to the tier 5 items, we have Aegis the Immortal, and while it's technically not a new item in the sense that an item called Aegis the Immortal used to exist, uh, it's such a dramatic rework that obviously it's a very different item. It now takes on the same functionality that it has in Dota 2, resurrecting a dead unit after a short delay. This effect is best on important carries like Dragon Knight or Sven, but it's also strong on somebody like Treant Protector, who's very impactful late into the fights when there's only a few units remaining on each side. That's whenever his Leech Seed ability is at its strongest, because Treant Protector kind of falls off towards the later stages of the game, but if he dies and resurrects and there's only like three or four units on each side, Treant can really take over that fight. Horn of the Alpha, and this was one of my favorite items from the card game Artifact, and it's now made its way to Dota Underlords. Shortly after the battle will start, a, it will summon a Thunder Hide to fight for you. This Thunder Hide deals reasonable DPS and has quite a bit of health, but no armor to defend itself. The summon comes adjacent to the Holder of the Horn, so if you really want to focus fire a specific enemy unit, you want to position it wisely so that you can target uh, the correct enemy. Otherwise, you just want to place it on any unit that's not holding another item, since there's really no combat benefit other than the summon. So just put it on anybody who doesn't have a higher priority item on them. Satanic, this is a new lifesteal item, but rather than providing a constant stream of healing, it provides a huge burst when the unit drops low. The long cooldown probably means this will not trigger twice in run fight, but I guess in theory the 20 second cooldown is possible to trigger again. Ideally, this will be used on high damage dealers to make the lifesteal worthwhile. While it does provide some health, it's definitely inferior to other tier 5 items like Heart of Tarrasque in terms of raw survivability, unless you're really taking full advantage of that lifesteal trigger. So the best units here are going to be Sven, Slark, Legion Commander, or Dragonite, who deal lots of attack damage, and you want to keep them up and alive with that lifesteal. And... Finally, we've got Vesture of the Tyrant. Once again, this is probably the oddest one. We save the oddest for last. It provides a potentially very powerful effect, granting the undying effect from the old Helm of the Undying, where the unit just won't die if, uh, if they have this unit nearby them. It's very short range, only directly adjacent, and provides no other stats on its own. If an allied unit is undying, but then it like walks away from whoever is holding the vesture, they're going to die instantly. So this makes it a little bit more ideal on melee units, who will hopefully try to keep adjacency to other friendly units, especially knights who have that built-in logic to try to stay adjacent to each other. Alternatively, it can also be strong when you place it on a central unit like Necrophos, who's in the middle of a heavy ranged composition, because your ranged units are going to stay stacked around it, and then Necrophos is relatively tanky, and can keep himself up through a long fight while the rest of your units are undying. This is probably one of the hardest items to evaluate, and without a lot of testing, to go behind it. So the upside is very, very high if this works out, but also it can just completely fail, and you do absolutely nothing with it at all. So once again, this is uh, a lot of new items and a lot of this is kind of speculative based on the my initial thoughts and impressions of the patch. And always remember that items are very contextual based on your build, based on your units, based on your opponent's units. So always take that in, into consideration on considering which items to pick and who to equip them on. Make sure you like and subscribe if you enjoy content like this. And also check me out over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash tinman354, where I stream almost every day some more Dota Underlords content. And if you want this kind of content to continue, please do consider supporting me on Patreon at patreon.com slash tinman354. Any help is deeply appreciated. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.